the Intel Pentium, the one processor that is known all around the computer. Though it might be seen as it would belong to a basic build, it had its time when it shined and we are gonna look at it today. Let us start with the original Pentium. The original Pentium is an extremely modest processor by today's design. Being introduced in 1993, it had a transistor count of 3.1 million with a clock speed of 60 and 66 MHz and a cache size of 16 kilobytes. The only thing it had as an advantage was with the bulky x86 compatibility it had which came with enormous sacrifices of performance and high power consumption. The original Pentium was a slow performer, even beaten by the i486, its own predecessor. The big reason being that a large part was dedicated solely for x86 support. The Pentium had a two 5-stage integer pipelines which Intel designated as UNV and one 6-stage floating point pipeline. The chip's front end does dynamic branch prediction, a form of technique to predict the next work to be done and doing it before so as to make the CPU much efficient. The problem with this structure is that UNV integer pipelines are not fully symmetric. The pipe is slightly more capable and contains a shifter that V doesn't. The pipes are also not independent. There are only certain instructions on which the two pipes can work parallelly. The front end of the Pentium was bloated with x86 decoders that was there only for the purpose of decoding x86 instructions to the processor. All this meant the processor had a new but an inefficient architecture. In spite of all of this, the success for the Pentium brand was solely attributed to its timing. Intel managed to introduce the Pentium chip between the Microsoft release of Windows 3.1 and 3.11. But it was the release of Windows 95 launched on 22nd of August 1995 that really helped launch the Pentium in the public consciousness. This led to the creation of the Intel machine, a machine with the OS and processor combination of Windows and Intel. This combination went on to dominate the PC industry for the upcoming years with the Pentium 2s and 3s. Fast forward to the 2000 and comes the Pentium 4, one of the most controversial processor in Intel lineup. The advantages for earlier Pentium 4 microarchitectures were unclear. Though the Pentium ran faster on well-optimized applications, it ran much slower on old legacy applications, even beaten by its own predecessor, the Pentium 3. It also emitted more power and heat. As a result, the Pentium 4 was avoided by computer savvy buyers in along with other reasons like the price premium and questionable benefits with the restriction to only one type of RAM that is RAM bus. Though all of these problems came to an end, high power and temperatures were still a problem with the latest Pentium 4 architecture named the Prescott which was being labeled as the Press Hots on several forums of the time. The Pentium 4 process too had several problems, especially with earlier process in the lineup with the Willamette and Netbust architecture. Computers using the Pentium 4 process requires RAM bus DRAM which costs more than the regular SDRAM and it is much slower than the SDRAM. Another drawback for the Pentium 4 process is that they do not support the multiple instruction decoder or barrel shifters like old Pentium process did. Hence this means the code optimized for the earlier Pentium process that is designed to take advantage of this performance enhancing techniques will actually run slower on Pentium 4 which lacks these systems. The Pentium 4 process consumes more power than other processes of similar performance. This means special measures must be taken to remove the heat generated by the processor from the chip and from the enclosure. In addition, Computer systems that use Pentium 4 processors require larger power supplies, thus requiring more power and expensive PSUs. As there is more power requirements, the temperature also increases. As temperature increases, the sensors on the processors will detect the increase in temperature and reduce the clock speed in order to protect it. In a system where the processor is not adequately cooled, there is no chance that the processor will reach its full potential. And that's what Pentium processor are currently in for. It updates like dual core on 2005 in Pentium D and extreme edition cache curves. The Pentium brand has seen its decline onto a more budget processor with the follow of control chips taking the throne, essentially creating the core i3, i5 and i7 brands. Nevertheless, the Pentium branding was brought back for the low cost chips, taking the market spot once occupied by its brother, the Celeron. 